So um, we do, we had, oh, I know what we can do. We can review yeah. the, um, the minutes. Let me get that up. I'm using my work laptop at home, so it feels foreign in the setting. So um, just bear with me while I get things. Julie, you, you look at the city, at the town hall. Finance committee starts at five thirty. So, oh, we're done goodness. at five thirty. Oh, we'll, if we're not, we'll, we'll be done by five. Good. By five. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Where are the meetings? I mean, the minutes. Oh, sorry. see dun, dun, dun. thought I had them here do you want to share them I'm trying to but um I don't know where I put them on this laptop so just go. just hold on a sec here we go oh you're sharing them yeah. great thank you <laughs> Julie's a professional <laughs> I was just reading them <laughs> Three seconds before the meeting started. <laughs> so I'll move that we approve the minutes as written. I'll second that. You guys want me to scroll through them or? Does anybody have any discussion? I think they look great. Me too. No, I'm all set. So until uh, Satu gets here, the mo there's a motion and it's been seconded. All in favor? Roll call. I Roll call. Roll yeah, call. Yeah, you do roll, roll call online. Roll call. Okay. All right. So, Eva, you weren't here, but uh, how do you want to vote? Aye. <laughs> yes. Julie Chalfont. Aye. Judith Holmes. Aye. Candace Carlin, Bradbury Carlin. Uh, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. I think that's all that's vote votable at this point. Dan wasn't at the meeting, so. Oh, I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not a committee member. You're ex officio, yeah, you're. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just consulting. I'm, high, I'm the hired help on this one. Yep. That's right. Well, here comes Satu. She can. Um... So, and I'll turn it over to her. Okay, I yes. apologize. Yes. Well, there you <laughs> are. I have to run through the snow to the next door. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> we, did, we just made a motion to adjourn. Well done. Oh, okay, <laughs> see you guys. <laughs> I apologize. And I, my foot came off and my foot got caught in the snow. It was quite dramatic. Um, we, we, anyway. we're, done with, we're done with the minutes. We're waiting for you to start. Oh, you're done with the minutes? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's very okay. Cool. So has everyone introduced themselves? Because I know Ava wasn't here last week. Uh, oh, I wonder. Well, Make just sure to everyone, I'm Eva just... Tor, um, resident, and sorry I missed the first meeting. I had a family medical um, emergency, but everything is under control, and mm -hmm. I look forward to being part of uh, this group. I did watch the recording um, and uh, have a sense of who everyone is, so thank you. Awesome. It's great to have you, Eva. Maybe we should just go around quickly and introduce ourselves. Uh, Eva, I'm uh, Satya Zola. I'm chairing this committee, and... I'm chair of the trustees of the Tilton Library. Uh, hi, I'm Candace. Yeah. Hi, I'm Candace uh, Bradbury Carlin. I'm the library director. I'm Julie Chalfan. I'm on finance committee. Tim Hilchey, a select board member. Uh, Judy Holmes, uh, friends of the Tilton Library. All right. So I think we're just missing Vern. Is that right? Yeah. OK. So I didn't hear from him, but Vern is the, the other member, Ava, of the group. So um, I will share my screen uh, to have the agenda in front of us. I love the agenda. It's quick. It's easy. It's very quick. <laughs> the meeting has been opened. <laughs> we approved the minutes. So maybe 
Do you want to talk Dan, about the schedule real quick? Yeah. Do you want to do that? So I saw, you know, uh, in the meeting minutes and talking to Phil, he, he kind of went over the schedule that he wants to follow. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit longer than I like. Yeah. And I want to work on Phil on that because um, I know Phil's really busy and, you know, we're all busy, but I want to try and get him to shrink that schedule down some if we can. Uh, the important part of the schedule is really the next two months. Uh, the next two months, I would recommend after Phil gets back on the 24th that we meet every other week uh, until we get design development completed. Uh, once design development's completed, which should take about three, maybe four meetings. Um, once design development is completed, we will uh, we will immediately go into uh, we will immediately go into. Well, I take that back. We have a little bit of schematic design to do too, because I, I, my understanding was you guys wanted to relook at some of the spaces and so the orientation of the building with regard to a tree and 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 things that 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 the tree, not a tree, the tree. So um, once once we get into design development, we're really talking about the systems of the building. What kind of HVAC systems? What kind of a power requirement are we going to need? What kind, what's the exterior going to be? What's the insulation values going to be? All of the things that make the building a building. Now we've made a lot of assumptions in the estimates for the building, so we can't obviously go beyond uh, the appropriation. But we think we're pretty comfortable with where, where we are with regard to the estimates that we did uh, a few months back. But those are important decisions. And, and I'd like to meet every other week until we get all those decisions done. Once those decisions are done, we can meet monthly. And we might not even have to meet every month. Uh, while the construction documents are going together, which is going to take about five months, um, it's really the it's really the detail of every nut, bolt, and screw. You know, every door hinge gets detailed. Every uh, piece of floor base gets detailed, uh, and that's not something that you guys will, will dig into. You'll you'll see everything prior to the detailing in design development, but the actual putting the, together the construction documents for the public bidding is really just technical stuff that Phil and I will, will, will go through on your behalf to make sure we have a good set of uh, bid documents. Phil did a tremendously uh, good set of documents in Irving and another good set of documents in, uh, in Greenfield. So obviously you went through Greenfield and you loved it, hopefully. Um, <laughs> if you didn't love it, I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> I've been working on that thing for like three years. <laughs> So, um, and, and that's it. So, uh, our woman wants me to keep rolling on here. Um, is she still there? Who? Uh, do, uh, uh, Satu, you're still there? I'm still here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm looking at, I'm looking at your agenda. I was going to roll right into to item three if I could. Yeah. Can I just ask one question? Sure. Go ahead. Um, when we took the tour in Greenfield, yeah, uh, they were telling us about various subcommittees of this of this yeah. group, and yeah. we talked to Phil a little bit about this. But I wonder also what you think about like the timing of when those committees should be established. So, um, in in Greenfield, we didn't have formal subcommittees. We had informal groups advising the architect, uh, not advising mm -hmm. the building committee. So they oh. advise the architect. So colors was one of the committees, uh, art was another committee. Um, those were basically the two main committees and FF&E. &E. Um, FF&E, you don't even have to worry about until we're in construction. Uh, FF&E is furniture, fixtures and equipment. Um, art is entirely subjective and up to uh, the town uh, as to whether you wanna spend any money on art or not. Um, most communities don't. Uh, they display I got that from the locals. Greenfield wanted the, the locals to actually participate in the building project by building the bike racks and some benches and things like that. So um, we'll see how it turns out. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I, I don't know how it's gonna turn out. So yeah, we had those committees. Uh, colors were really important. 
uh, colors were huge. Uh, and the director and the uh, uh, children's director uh, were, were heavily involved in the color selection because uh, it affects furniture, it affects everything. Um, the materials you, you, you're going to pick as a building committee. Uh, the colors you're going to eventually pick is a building committee. Uh, Phil will, get, will give you color boards of everything and you'll vote it as, as a committee. The actual final colors might be off a shade here and there um, due to the fact that it's public bidding. And although you may have picked a Johnsonite floor tile, we might end up with an Armstrong and the closest light blue they have is a shade different. So uh, there's things like that that uh, we'll navigate our way through in, in the public bidding process. But um, th that's th that's something that you guys can ponder, you know, on your on your own what you want to do, uh, and uh, if you want to set up those extra steps, we'll, we'll, we're happy to we're happy to help facilitate those. Um, I will say, Greenfield has way too many cooks in the kitchen. Uh, and uh, it took an awful long time to get a lot of things done because there were a lot of competing interests from a lot of, you know, we had two mayors, I don't know, six different council, city council members, and, you know, a lot of, a lot of changeover. So, um, but it's, it's entirely up to you what you want to do, so too. If you, you guys want to have a, I, I, at a minimum, you should have an FF and E committee. And at a minimum, you should have a, a, a color committee. And if you want them to be true subcommittees, you got to appoint them and they have to follow the open meeting law. If you want them just to advise the architect and let the architect then come to the building committee with variations of the input he got, that's a lot. All right, so that makes, right. makes sense. That makes sense. I think they were also talking about like a teen room committee, subcommittee yeah. in Greenfield. Uh, not so that's, that's not not part of our project. Oh, okay. So if they have a team room, it's probably for operations. Okay. Because the team but, room was fully designed. Okay, but it sounds like this is down the line, not something yep. we need to worry about right now. Okay. You'll be you'll be you'll be worried about materials and colors uh, in in about three months. You'll start okay. it'll start coming up in a broad context. Okay. All right. Great. So our our, our role in the project is to make sure that you don't get in trouble, you don't break the law, uh, and that we, we keep pushing everyone as best we can. Um, we have yet to have a project that's been appropriated go over budget. This will not be the first one. Uh, this will be within the, the levy limit, uh, uh, the appropriation limit that you guys uh, appropriated uh, with your exclusion, and we're not going back to town meeting for money. Uh, we're gonna do that with a bunch of uh, estimates along the way. Um, uh, similar to the one we did at 100,000 feet that created the uh, that created the the initial budget, as we further define the drawings, we continually do estimates, and some of the the guesses that are in that estimate go away and become more common numbers. Uh, so uh, the first thing that Phil told me. Uh, because I missed the meeting that I was going to be doing a uh, RFP for, for temporary space. <laughs> so we've started to work on that and I will work with Casey to get that uh, ready to go. Um, it's obviously too early to do it now because we need to know when you're occupying the space, when you're moving, hone in on that date a little closer and then kind of back into it and probably want to have the space, uh, the RFP due six months before we go to bidding. So we have plenty of time on that, but we are, we actually have started the rough drafts on that actual uh, 30B procurement. It sounds looks like Tim has a question, Tim. Yeah, um, what sort of things do we need to be thinking in particular, um, the library staff about volume of space they're gonna need to store the stuff that's not gonna be well, accessible? I gotta, I gotta tell you, it's a funny story because I had a discussion with, uh, the MBLC, and I said, uh, you know, how much of the collection do I have to rent? And she told me it was one book. Uh, <laughs> and, and she was dead serious. She said, you don't have to have your collection available. You have to have the ability of your patrons to be able to get to the collection. And since you have CW Mars, you might be able to set up some sort of a pickup and drop-off system without having to rent. 
uh, as long as the staff's still on duty and you're maintaining the minimum hours required, um, uh, the library can remain open. Right, Ava has a question. Hi, yeah, I was wondering if we could talk for a minute about project sequencing and looking at that construction schedule that uh, was at the last meeting. You know, it it, it just it seems um, it seemed quite long, and particularly with construction drawings um, and design development. I'm wondering, can can you break ground by the fall? You know, having construction starting in January. You know, that that could be pushed off for months, depending on weather. And if you could just talk about some of those and if there's any overlap. And I also had a question on permits. Um, so, and, and so why don't you start with that? And then so uh, if you uh, remember what I said when we first started, uh, I believe that uh, Phil's schedule was a little too long. Um, uh -huh. I think that uh, if we commit to an every other week schedule, uh, when Phil gets back on the 24th i believe that we will be bidding closer to uh september october uh with groundbreaking uh for frost uh i'm not really too worried about uh the weather uh, uh to be honest with you there's plenty to do um even if even if they're not physically working uh as long as we can order materials uh, one of the hardest things that we have is getting the materials on time it's not necessarily putting the pieces together. In Greenfield, I have, you know, I we received our uh, main switch gear, uh, which is the, the main power panel that comes, the first piece that comes from the street after the meter is what's called the main switch gear. And we just received it yesterday or the day before. Um, so uh, that should have been received six months ago. So getting, getting, getting the stuff ordered is uh, more important to me than when we break ground. So, uh, because that locks in all the pricing. So yes, I agree with you, it's way too long. And yes, I'm gonna be beating on Phil as soon as he gets back. Okay, and then have all the permits required for the project been identified at this stage or does that come uh, with design? Well, it will come with design development, but we think we have, we think we have uh, all of them figured out um, unless there's some bizarre one uh, in uh, Franklin County that I'm not aware of, uh, I think we're I think we're going to be in pretty good shape with standard uh, municipal permitting. Thank you. Dan, is there anything else you want to talk about regarding your role in the project? No, I think. I think I, I, I mean, I, we have a, 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 a huge role when it comes to construction. So we're the eyes in the field when it comes to construction. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna bore you with those details tonight because you're gonna hear me talk about it over and over again when we get to bidding and when we get to construction. Great. Does anyone else have questions for Dan? Tim. Um, Vern, maybe. And, and Ava might have a good idea about this, but how does the committee help the architect come up with the exterior design of the building um, by, you know, like for, for instance, for me, maximizing a solar panel array would be a, an important thing to consider. So how do we go about that? So uh, a couple of things. Um, first of all, there, we have goalposts on this job. So this, the, the goalposts of the, the amount of money we have, and there's the goalpost of the MBLC requirements that are, with, that are within the grant, uh, the certain number of square footages. Mm -hmm. Beyond those two sets of goalposts, you can pretty much do anything you want. Uh, the design that you voted at, the, the pretty picture that you voted on at town meeting uh, can be scrapped and, 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 and you can do something entirely different. It is actually not uncommon. Uh, for that to happen when the grant is issued five years before the building, where a new set of building committee members come in and, and totally change it over. Um, so yes, you can get your orientation a certain way for the, for the sun. If I remember correctly, uh, he did have the, the roof line for, for solar on it. Whether it was maximized for the nth panel, I don't know. But in design development, we'll actually be talking to uh, 
the electric uh, utility to determine whether we can, in fact, load up that line that serves that street with additional power. My guess is we can, but you know, we were maxed out in Greenfield with how much solar we could put on that roof. I could have covered that roof with twice as many panels as I have, but I, I, I'm not allowed to because they don't have the capacity in the line. So those questions will get answered, Tim. Does that help you? Yeah, yeah, no, I just was uh, so interested. In the second help. half of your question, the second half of your question was, how do you uh, do it? We, uh, we say no. Uh, don't be afraid to hurt Phil's feelings. He's hired help. So yeah, uh, I didn't know if like direction came first, like we're thinking now rather than behind the building, it's going to be on the side, it's going to maximize blah, blah, blah. Maybe yeah. Vern is a, and a, a designer, you know, it helps us out in that direction, but he's saying no. Uh, because yeah, he, you tell an architect design a building, they design a building, it comes back, you don't like it because you didn't ask him to do stuff before he did it. So I'm just trying to figure out what's the process and how we give input to him before he goes and spends a lot of time drawing something we're not ultimately happy with. Well, I think I think on the 24th, uh, we'll be going through each space uh, of the existing uh, of the existing uh, building as submitted for the grant and make sure that we're still all on the same path. At that point in time is when you say, hey, you know, I don't like this, I don't like that. I mean, uh, I can't tell you how many people came up to me to say, oh, I don't like the fact there's a wall of glass in your, in your library. Uh, and, and, and I've heard that over and over in DFA. And I, 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 10 years ago, I would have agreed with you. But the thermal systems and the, the glazing systems today aren't the same as 10 years ago. They're pretty thermal. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons I wanted you guys to see Greenfield is so you could see just how comfortable it is because the amount of beautiful light it brings in, if it's oriented correctly, is, is fantastic. So, um, but yeah, that first meeting, we'll, 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 we'll be pushing them. We'll make sure that all the questions are asked. So I'm assuming, you know, we're not starting from a design of 0%. There'll be some basis. And then everybody, we, you know, we know renewables are of interest. And, you know, I, I assume that he'll go through, Phil will go through some basic parameters. And then that's where, I think that's why Dan's suggesting we meet frequently so we mm -hmm. can be in touch with the development of the design before it gets too far. So that- uh, we're, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna vote the design when you're happy. And once you're happy, we're gonna develop the design. Um, and, and we went through the same process when we went through the grant. I mean, uh, Satu, you were you were in on most of those meetings. I I can't tell you how many designs we threw out, a lot. Um, so we got it we got it to at the point where we thought we had what was perfect for night, you know, for 2018, <laughs> and what the thought process was in 2018. But remember, again, the goalposts are the appropriation. The goalposts are. Uh, that building, uh, that building uh, program, which went in in 2016 by the previous director. So those those don't change. We can we can we can we can we can, we can shrink children's by five percent. We can add add as much as we want, but we can only shrink by five percent. Uh, stretch it to ten percent on each one of those program items. So yeah, there's a plan that's been developed. It was the it was what we showed at town meeting. And that is right now the basis of to why we're here today. But that doesn't mean we can't totally scrap it. So I Dan, do you think find it pretty good? Yeah. So do you think at our next meeting in a couple of weeks we'll be able to kind of look at that design and get into yeah, I'm gonna talk, yeah, I'll talk to Phil before before the next meeting uh on the twenty fourth and I will Is it the twenty first? Uh, I thought it was the twenty first. So. It's two weeks from today, right? Um, I thought in <laughs> yeah. the meeting minutes it said yes. the 20, 21st. That was last month, uh, January. Oh, last month? Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. I keep thinking what's going uh, on on the 24th. <laughs> I want to make sure I want to make sure he's back. He did say so, he'd be back for the for that meeting. I'm pretty sure yes. he did. Okay. Yeah. 
So I'll go over with him to, to be ready with the PowerPoints on what the, the original uh, elevations and the original plans were and what we, what we thought the HVAC systems would be, what the structural would be, all the parts and pieces that went into us coming up with the, uh, uh, the amount of, the, of construction for this project. Great. Great. Um, Any other questions? Judy? Mm -hmm. um, it, it may be that those original schematic designs um, are available on the Tilton website. I, I, I don't, I don't. They are. They are. Yeah. Know, my phone hooked it up right now. But if it's, if it's all available electronically, people, we could send it out and people could like take a look at it, you know, before the next meeting and just uh, begin to sort of see what the ideas were that we came up with last time. You can always drive up to CVS by a big red pen and start bloodying them up. <laughs> I, miss you know, I, I, I actually think it's a pretty good plan. Um, uh, you know, it achieved some of the goals that we had, but, you know, and some of those goals might not be the same today. You know, we had a, we had a, a pretty good sized community aspect to this building with regard to the meeting rooms. And since then you bought the church you're talking about 1888, although it's going to be pretty expensive. Um, you know, so I don't know, you know, we didn't have that global look of that whole campus back then. We were looking at our little piece. So, you know, I, I don't think it would hurt to, to, to take a look at how this is going to fit in with the global uh, piece. You also talked about, uh, uh, uh oh, Julie. You also <laughs> Go ahead. I was just wondering if the meeting room was programmatic or if we're allowed to decrease that by more than 5%. Um, I don't know that the meeting room is programmatic. I'd have to double check that. Um, I know I some it, is, meeting space, can... it depends on whether the meeting space during library hours, Julie, is part of the program. And I yes. think it is. I think that they were in the building program, it, it was supposed to be. But yeah. again, we can always ask for a waiver. It, we probably won't get it, but we can always ask if you got a better plan. <laughs> yeah. All right. Ava, did you have one more question? I just was going to say it seems like the question on tying into Eversource is a pretty important one. If solar or geothermal is going to be considered. So I don't well, know. Ge if that's geothermal, geothermal won't have anything, I don't think, to do with the, with, with, uh, um, geothermal won't have anything to do with uh, Eversource. With a tie into the Eversource, right. right. But the question on, I mean, the question of renewables came up last time. And so if there are limitations on solar, that might weigh in on whether geothermal is used as well. And, you know, it just seems like an important question that should be answered. Well, I think it's there. important to your overall campus thought of doing a giant well out there that would serve all three or four of those buildings. Um, but I, we're just not there yet. So, um, but we certainly can ask the question uh, of GGD, who's the engineer on on this uh, to start working with the utility to find out if there is a, uh, an unlimited capacity or whether the capacity is not there. Because the power and who goes is the both. Engineer? I'm sorry, G, 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 D. Yep. And where are they out of? North Dartmouth. Thank you. Tim, did you have a question? Uh, no. Julie Comment? might have some information about this too, but the, the campus group has talked about, and maybe the select board has, a possibility of some sort of microgrid. I don't know if that would be responsive to the question of how much solar could be put in. They want something that sort of would protect the campus area, per, you know, if, if in case of emergencies and stuff like that. So would that in likely increase the capacity of what could be done there? Uh, I don't. I, I don't believe so. The microgrid would be for. Uh, supplementing uh, in the event that Eversource went down, not, okay. not, Thanks. not not feeding back to Eversource. Although you could have a microgrid that that you know performs all day, and you're and you're getting paid for that performance uh, in, in in some sort of a solar field. 
again, we, we have to find out what the capacities are of your of your trunks because if your trunks if your trunks in, uh, can't handle it, it gets really expensive fast to get that line uh, operated. I mean, really fast. Okay. We looked into doing a microgrid for Northampton. And uh, the state pulled the uh, two million dollar grant, and it was going to be it was going to be wood chip fuel and solar fuel. It was actually pretty pretty uh, ahead of its time five years ago. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dan. This gives us a little bit of better picture of the next step. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, we're it's still coming out of the gate, but we'll, we're we're going to start charging. Yeah, wonderful. Um, <laughs> You're gonna love. You're gonna love working with them. You truly are gonna love. Oh yeah. With them. I I I assume so. <laughs> I think so too. Yeah. All right. So the next item on our agenda, I think, was the tree. Um, mm -hmm. Update on the tree. Candace, did you find anything out about that? Well, yes. It's definitely a um, a rabbit hole. <laughs> um, I talked to the. I reached out to the tree warden, and I didn't hear. I did hear that I might not hear back um, right away, but I did hear back about four or five days after I contacted him. And in the meantime, I had reached out to another person, Mike Morey, who is a town resident and um, he's a professional forester and a patron. And so um, I made an appointment with Mike to come meet me. In the meantime, I heard from the town warden, uh, tree warden. And both the, what, they, what the overlap was from the two of them is that the two trees in the back, the one closest, the maple closest to the back, and then the one that's kind of on the border of the property, um, and then the beech tree in the front, he said, no matter what you do, you have to be, you look with, with construction that whether you're digging or you're having constantly having heavy machinery going back and forth over the roots, you're going to upset those types of trees. So, um, so I, I kept trying to get them to answer about like, well, should we, is the other trees worth saving for doing the design, you know, the way it is going, going straight back, or should we? You know go with to the side to um and save the trees and he said that he, well this the tree warden didn't um he was concerned that um that there was gonna be too much time spent on changing a design be, to save trees and he didn't know if it was worth the time and so, i said no and then and then the the um forester said he thought we could do go either way. Obviously, we'd lose the tree if we go straight back. But he he did say the tree is old; it would need a lot of care. Mainly, we'd have to agree to like maintain it with regular pruning and cabling, um, and that um, even going to the side, he'd want to see the site plan and see um, even going to the side um, instead of the back. Would that still be enough room with all the, you know, and also drainage? You know, if if, if drainage has changed, uh, that could affect the trees. And same with the the copper beech tree in the front. Not as concerned, but a little bit concerned. If we go to the side, will that affect that tree? Um, so so and then so I ended up the forester ended up saying that he would be happy to come to a meeting, the next meeting, and and talk to to us and answer questions. Um, and uh, and then he said, you know, if we really want to get into details, we could reach out to an arborist, and he gave me some names. So, so, so um, I, I'm just going to say this. So when we designed this project, you didn't own the church. So we were restricted with where we could go. So mm -hmm. I, I think that, you know, uh, personally, I don't think the tree is going to survive, but I'm, I'll, I'll defer to the professionals on that. But, you know, the tree, the tree people are going to do everything they can to try to keep the tree. So, but if that's the will of the committee, uh, as we're doing that initial design development, uh, we'll, 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 we'll find a way. But it's going to involve us, you know, moving a little bit. And we can't leave the, the other, the other goalpost that we have is we are stuck on this site, even though you own the site next to it. I don't know that we can move the, anything beyond that line, that property line. I'd have to, I'd have to talk to uh, the MDLC on that to see if they'd be okay with us extending the site. They probably would be, to be honest with it, as long as we had proof of ownership. But, you know, I can't tell you how many communities have tried to change their sites and been told no, and they, they lose their grant. So, 
you know, we have to stay within that site footprint. And that's what we tried to do with this project, provide the parking, provide the building, provide the program within that site. And remember, there's gonna be stormwater management for the roof water and the parking lot water that takes up a lot of underground space. It's a high ground water table there. So, all right. What do other folks think about this? Is it worth bringing someone in? Judy has- I thought, Oh, I didn't see it. Julie. <laughs> Who has her hand up? Oh, maybe not. I, I thought Judy so. did. No, oh, I saw that Tim put something in chat. Oh, Judy. Um, Tim also noted in chat that someone on the Deerfield Conservation Commission, Sean Libby, is a state forester, if we want a third opinion. <laughs> um, I don't think, I honestly, I don't think it would hurt. I mean, yeah, I can just reach out to you. Why yeah, not? If, yeah. If two out of three of them say it's probably going to be too hard to save, you know, you've got your answer. If they say, yeah, I think we can save it, then you've got a decision to make. Yeah. Do you yeah, what I, we I, I got, oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, I, no, I was just gonna say that, that if, if we did have the professional thing, it's just not worth it to save the tree and you could plant some new trees. You could do some really nice landscaping stuff outside. Mm -hmm. If you took those trees down, that it would be a lot easier to sell it to people who, you know, grew up having picnics under those trees and don't ever want to see them go. Right. Um, but, you know, if, if, it, if it's really going to be a major option to keep them healthy um, and, and, and a losing operation to keep them healthy, that's one thing. And I think the other thing, too, that from last our last meeting is that um, Phil was talking about how like an extra, I don't know, I think he said six weeks or maybe even two months was built into the schedule because of the issues that were going to arise rise with having to save the tree. And so maybe not saving the tree, um, if it gets us two months closer to the final, you know, the, the final unveiling, that would be a factor to consider as well. Um, so it's good to it's good to get get more opinions from the professionals, but they're probably never all good. <laughs> I don't agree anyway, but they have them. <laughs> Julie, Julie, honestly, I kind of felt like we're we not asking three attorneys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, honestly, I kind of felt like um, it's such a complex issue, just the world of trees, which is a, a whole new world for me, um, <laughs> that both the tree warden and the, um, the, um, the forester were did not really want to give a straight answer because they said, or a, a definite answer, because they said there's so many issues. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> And how much, how much time and money do we want to spend as a building committee designing around it? Number one, number two, how much do we want to spend as a library slash town to maintain? And I know that these trees are special to people. I know they love them. I know it's beautiful, um, but I don't know if that's so much of a factor. Um, I will say this, yes. in Western Mass, we have a lot, a lot of trees. It's, <laughs> like, it's not like you're in Eastern Mass where they're red. <laughs> Julie, did you? question or comment? Yeah, so we also wanted to reorient that back piece for the solar, um, which right. I think the way the original design, it's pointed the wrong way to put solar on the roof. Um, I seem right. to- have So regardless of the tree, there's gonna be a little bit of something or other. Okay. Oh. Did you Who's freeze, Dan? Dan? Did I freeze? Oh, you there you are. Oh, dear. Right. I, I, I think I oh it says my internet connection is unstable. Uh -oh. um, I I I, th I I think we went through this before Julie, and I think that we all said once we get the grant and we get the funding, we would would deal with some of these issues. And now we're here. Yeah. So it's time. <laughs> so I think we'll get we'll we'll get it. And, and I, I I have to tell you, I'm thrilled we have a selectman, and I'm thrilled we have a finance committee person on the project because it, it's going to. Uh, give a whole credible uh, feel to it as we go through and no one's going to think that, you know, uh, there aren't uh, good people watching. Sneaking around. <laughs> Sneaking around. Sneaking around. So, but that's it. That's all I have. So, but Phil's, oh, he's not going to do anything while he's away, right? I'm just thinking like if I we're telling him to go design around this tree and all of a sudden we're sounding like maybe we don't want to design about the tree, is that something we need to resolve pretty quickly I was wondering. before he gets into a bunch of stuff? Phil, Phil's, Phil's next few meetings will be uh, 
uh, conceptual. They're not going to be anything that you need to worry about whether he okay. wastes time drawing something or not. So okay. I'll have a good long talk with Phil when he gets back. What do we think about bringing in some tree experts to the next meeting, inviting them? I think that uh, personally, I, I think we should get somebody like like um, someone from the cotton tree family to come to we'll really look at a particular tree rather than sort of looking at the whole forest and stuff. Like, <laughs> well, that, that's why that Mike recommended um, an arborist. He said an arborist yes. would be the best. Yeah, um, I we 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 use the cotton pe people the in my old house. They're terrific. They really know their stuff. But what's the name? Cotton, C O T T O N. What's the name, Judy? What? Cotton. Cotton. C O T T O N. Yeah, I, I, I can't. I, I, I can look it up for you and send it to. You. I can't remember the first name. It's Joseph. I, I don't remember. Maybe that, that would be a good idea. So, uh, well, I know, I I know Sean Libby is. You know, he's got a master's in forestry, and uh, you know, not that that's necessarily, you know, but uh, he knows trees pretty darn well, and and. I would now think that, with a master's in forestry. Yeah. He knows trees. Now that you um now that we have actually approved a project, you know, some of these decisions are just gonna make we're gonna make or not gonna make all, everyone happy. So of course, um, yeah. my concern is if you build around the trees and in 15 years they start falling onto the roof and breaking stuff, you know, is, did you really do yourself a favor? Correct. That is, yeah, is, and that's and that's why I think that the point that, that um, if the building, the expansion going to the side is not just for the trees, um, is something that we would also consider for the design that if, we're, if that would really help with the solar, um, yeah. then that would be maybe even more important, you know. Or if the two trees in the back are so down the road of, you could keep them for another hundred years if you didn't do anything around them, but they might die in five years if you build. Um, but you can save the front tree. Um, is that a consideration? You know, because um, I do think the landscaping around a totally new big building like we're proposing is going to be, at some point, overshadow these issues that we're having now. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I'll ask Sean to just go over and give us an opinion, and and maybe write something up that's you know, scientifically you know, okay, shareable with folks, and. Uh, you know, get some, get a third opinion in there. Yeah, we could also ask the arborist. An arborist too. And then arborist, yeah. 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 I'll ask him yeah. if he's considered an arborist. I'm not sure if he is. Well, from what Mike told me, who uh, has a PhD in forestry. Yes, he does. Uh, I was going to say. <laughs> I didn't uh, want to say that, but he said that really the arborists are the ones that know how individual trees work. Where really the, the forester yeah. or the community of They're trees. more general. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, although, you know, he had more knowledge than me, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, I, I hope so with a PhD <laughs> in forestry. <laughs> Good. Okay, so okay. great. So we'll get a couple more opinions and, and hopefully make a decision on this and not spend too many of our meetings and hours talking about it. Yes. So. <laughs> as much as I love trees, I do love trees. Great. So, oh, did do, someone? Do we have, any, do we have anything else? We have nothing else except just talking about the next meeting, which is on the 21st. So I hope everyone has that in their calendar. And then I wasn't here in the beginning, so I don't know who was taking minutes. Did someone volunteer to take minutes this time? Dan was doing it this time. I have no problem doing the minutes. You got a video of the recording, so I'll just, I'll, I'll get them done between now and the next meeting. And then Jonathan uh, from FCAT is here. He wants to talk to the committee about uh, a video he wants to do about the project. Oh, hi, Jonathan. Hello. Yeah, basically, I'm interested in documenting the construction of the library and doing a whole thing that sort of showcases the history but shows it being built and how it will contribute to the community. So, so we get into we get into liability issues. OK non-construction people coming onto the construction site. Okay. However, we can probably work out something where you have a supervised visit monthly as the building's going on so you can strip together a, a series of-, of Okay. Movies. I will, will say too that FCAT does have like insurance and all too as well, so. Uh, it's not your insurance. I'm okay. worried about it. It's the general contractor who we don't know who we're gonna get some of the okay. 
some are more readily available to ideas like this and some aren't. Uh, in Greenfield, we have a camera across the street taking a picture every hour and we're dying to see what it looks like when it's done. <laughs> so uh, we started we started taking the picture from the library and then when they put the when the when the building went up it blocked the view so we had to move it across the street. So. Uh, but um, you know we'll 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 try to accommodate you but again you. a lot of it will will be dependent on who the general contractor is because they own the building for the period to which the construction right. goes. If It'll it doesn't be, work out, I can figure out a solution then that's more safer and doesn't enter, uh, that won't be an issue, so. Okay, thank and you. At a minimum, we own the church, so you could certainly put some <laughs> sort of camera thing on the church. All right, <laughs> that's a possibility. Go so. get up on top of the church. Do a time-lapse thing. Yeah. <laughs> put it on the steeple. We have drones. There's drones you can use. <laughs> I actually, one of my employees does have drones. It does drone work. Yeah, FCAT does some great drones. We we we, we <laughs> drone all we drone all our sites too, and we put them in the newsletters. So if you if you uh, want to see what what you're going to be getting from us, uh, just look at the Greenfield uh, newsletters. They're pretty good. All right, we we could talk a little bit more and figure out something. So yeah, I'm you're you're eight, you're, eight, you're eight months too early. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep you posted all right thank you thank you all right julie needs to head up but i think we're ready to adjourn in any case does anyone else have anything else they want to talk about or then roll, can i get a motion call, to roll, roll get a, get a, you gotta do a roll call a roll call to adjourn, to adjourn as well okay so who, who wants to make a motion to adjourn i'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting at uh, 5 21 p.m i second okay all in favor Satu Zoller. Oh, no, you got to do one at a time. Satu Zoller. <laughs> Eva Tor, I. Tim Hilchi, oh, I. Candace Bradbury, Carl, and I. Judy Holmes, I. Vern Harrington, I. Thank you. You've just okay. with the emergency order with the governor for the COVID era. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. And all right, we'll guys. See you. We'll see you on the 21st. Two weeks okay. from tonight. Great. All right. Take care.